Section 14.6, Reaction Mechanisms. So reaction mechanism is exactly how that something pulls apart from, its, from the rest of the reactants and then becomes the products. So it's all the events that happen during this thing. And sometimes they can be really simple. Uh, you simply, two things break apart and two new things join. Uh, you can also have kind of very complicated ones to where either the same thing has to, to bump into each other to make something new or more than one thing. So let's say, let's say you have something A and it's going to break apart. Well, that A can slam into itself and then break apart and make some kind of a product. So A can bump into A and do something. So one part could break off or one part could break off and go to another one and then it could do something. So uh, sometimes a mechanism can be very simple, like a one-step job. Other times it can be very complicated. Sometimes uh, two things have to hit each other. Okay, two things would hit, strike each other in order to do it. Sometimes three things have to strike each other. If three things strike each other, the, the odds are much smaller that it'll happen. That means if it's a complicated mechanism, you're not likely to get lots and lots of products. You're very unlikely to get a product. It would be a very rare event for three uh, molecules to slam together at exactly the right speed, at exactly the right orientation for something to happen. The chances are lower. And once you get to more than three, it's it's practically zero. In fact, you would not you would try try to do anything you could think of to not say, ah, we need three molecules slamming together. So if you have two singles, those are called unimolecular, one molecule, like reacting to itself. Or if you have something like this, A plus B is your reactants. That's called bimolecular. You have two molecules slamming together in order to make something. So the mechanism is some kind of a uh, step, either a single step or a multi-step process of making something. These steps are called elementary processes or an elementary reaction, something simple. And then you, you could have multi-step, which is more than one elementary reaction going on. So something could be transferred to something else and then it could be lost to a third molecule, something like that. But you're, it's essentially a sequence of elementary processes or elementary steps that then culminate in whatever chemical reaction we're talking about. So this is a review of what I was just talking about with unimolecular. If you have a unimolecular, something is going to essentially break apart. There's one molecule and it simply breaks apart into other things. So let's say I have a complicated molecule and it kind of breaks apart into two or more things. Then there's nothing hitting it. It's simply falling apart. And if it's falling apart, nothing slammed into it to make it happen. It's possible that something slammed in to make it break apart, but nothing joined with something else. It just became the, the uh, smaller pieces or their own products. By molecular, you're actually going to have some kind of a, uh, an impact where they're not only just striking each other to break them apart, but they're striking each other to break them apart and then form new things, new bonds to make products. By molecular, too, could be two different molecules to you know two different compounds that are coming together to make a third and then you start getting into weird ones like termolecular where you're going to either have three things that are the same or three things that are different that have to to uh, come together at the same time these are called this is called the molecularity if you have multi-step processes and we're talking about kinetics in this chapter so we're talking not just that they happen, but that what's the rate or how fast can something happen? If you have two steps, one step might happen very fast and the other hap might happen very slow. Okay, so um, if something happens very slow followed by something that happens very fast, the whole reaction is based upon how slow the slow is. So the slow will determine the, the total reaction. So it's called the rate determining step. So you're looking, if you want to know what the, the rate of the entire reaction is, and you have a slow step, 
Well, it's not going to be any faster than the slow step. It would be like the chain is only as strong as the weakest link. The reaction will happen as fast as the slowest step in that reaction will happen. So that's how you would determine. The rate determining step would either be the, the, the slower of the two or more reactions. Okay, let me try to give you a, like a good analogy. Let's say um, everybody in the high school is assembling sandwiches. Okay, we've got everybody's making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. We've got, you know, 120 people all making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. We have plenty of bread, plenty of peanut butter, plenty of jelly. Everybody's got a knife. We got all these different jars. So people are just racking up the, the sandwiches. But I've got three second graders are putting all the sandwiches in bags. So even though 100 people are making sandwiches, I've got three little kids putting them in bags. What's going to determine how many sandwiches get packed? Does that make sense? Only the whatever is the slowest is going to determine how many get packed in an hour. So the rate of packing sandwiches is not based upon making the sandwiches. It's based upon putting them in the bags. And if I have a slow, uh, a, a slow second step and a fast first step, it doesn't matter how fast the first step is. The whole reaction is going to be based upon how slow, the in this case, the sandwich baggers are. Here's an example. If I have nitrogen dioxide and I'm joining it with carbon monoxide to form nitric oxide plus carbon dioxide gas, when you actually do the, the data, find out the experiments of it, we're going to find that the concentration of carbon monoxide doesn't control how fast it goes. I could, I could have all the carbon monoxide in the world and it doesn't make it go any faster. It's found to be based only on the concentration of the nitrogen oxide. Now that's pretty cool. What that suggests is if there's if this doesn't determine the rate at all, and this re, this does, and it's it's a second uh, order step. So this is to the to the square. What that suggests is that there must be a first step where maybe an oxygen. Let's say I have an NO2, and it's striking with another NO2, and one of these oxygen is going to be transferred to the first guy. So that you're actually going to make, you're going to make an NO3 as an intermediate. So an intermediate is a product of a first step that you're not going to find in the products of the final. All right, so we don't have any NO3 over here. Then how do I know I'm making any at all? What's going to happen is since since I don't have any of this based in the reaction rate, and I have I have this based in twice it suggests that there must be a reaction where I've got two concentrations of NO reacting with each other. So there must be more than one step in this. And so you it's almost like a detective game. You're guessing what must be there, even though that you're only looking at the beginning at the end. There must be some kind of a middle, and what does that middle have to be? That's the, that's the detective pro property of it. So here's the proposed mechanism of this. You have a, uh, since it's based on the concentration of NO twice, they must be reacting together. There is no other way to, to explain that. Why that it needs, why must it be based if I, if I double the, if I double the initial concentration of the NO, I speed it up by four times. That means it must be the concentration of NO2 raised to the two. So if that's such, then they must be reacting together. So if they react together, what could happen? Well, the, one of the proposed is that one of the oxygen is transferred to the other guy. Okay, Then it reacts with the carbon monoxide to give it the other oxygen. So you end up with the NO2, okay, the NO2, and then a carbon, a carbon dioxide. So that's the pr proposal. If this is true, now what, you, what you're doing is you're suggesting something that could be true, then you're looking at the experiment and seeing, does it match? Does it match energy-wise? Does it match time-wise? Does it match everything that we say? Is it a good explanation for what we see? Okay. Well, if this is true, then that means there is something here called NO3 
that is not at the beginning and not at the end. This is called an intermediate. And the intermediate is consumed in the second step. It's, it's the reactant of the second step and the product of the first that's used up and you don't find it in the product of the final. Okay, so what we see is since carbon, uh, carbon dioxide is not involved, see here's the slow at the beginning. If carbon monoxide is not in the slow, then it's not in the rate law. That's why that at the beginning, carbon monoxide wasn't one of the concentrations that affected the rate. So that's another clue that if you've got an initial concentration that if you change it, it doesn't have it. It's called a rate, a zero, a zero rate law. It's, it's to the zero power, meaning it doesn't affect the rate at all. If I double the concentration, nothing happens. If I triple the concentration, nothing happens. So it's to the zero power. So if it's to the zero power, what must have happened was that it's involved in the fast step and the rate determining step is the slow step. So if it's not used in the slow step, then it's not in the rate law. Here's another example. If I have two nitric oxides and a bromine, and I put it together as a, remember this is a combination reaction of NOBr, well, at first you think, oh, okay, well, I've got NO and Br, and it comes together, M maybe three molecules all come together and make two molecules. Maybe they all bump together. Problem is, that's really rare. You would have to have it all three coming in at the same speed at exactly the same point and all lined up at the exact right way it just chances are very low that that happens so even though it would make sense that you could put them together it probably doesn't happen that way so you want to come up with a, a an easier possibility or a more likely possibility so you we find that the rate is to the second power in no and to the first power in Br. So uh, that again suggests that maybe NO is reacting with NO somehow. And maybe there's a first step and a second step. So it's suggesting a possibility of a, of a two-step reaction. 